Hey Fit to Lead teams, Team Create is here to take you through our task on delegation. Now we all know that delegation is simply assigning responsibility to someone else to complete a defined task. But we wanted to dig in a little bit deeper and get some real life examples from some of our coworkers. We interviewed them and are sharing their point of view. So let's take a look. Hi, uh, I'm Ryan. I'm here with Rich. He's the Royal Flag Product Manager. Um, we chose Rich. He's been with the brand for six years and he's been in his current position for three and a half years. Um, and we have him here today because we want to talk to him about um, how he gets delegated in his current role with the experience that he has. Sure. So um, there's sort of two ways that I get delegated to. There's the sort of indirect expected delegation where it's the normal deadlines in the product creation process. So just, uh, you know, it's expected basically that you're going to get your briefs done to get PLM updated and things like that. Then there's the sort of quick turn projects where um, somebody in senior management delegates a presentation to you quickly and you need, you know, need it done by three in the afternoon. Um, that process is a little more vague. You get sort of a rough outline and then going down we later drill down. Do you have any advice for managers that are taking on a, a new person on their team that's been with the company and they're familiar in their role? Um, I think the biggest thing would be just to um, figure out their strengths first and figure out what their best way to work is. Um, it can be pretty challenging if you're used to having one way and get it completely turned and have it the other way. Um, Having a manager that's very hands-on and then going to somebody that's very hands-off can be very a big adjustment for somebody and could lead to struggles. But that being said, um, somebody that's used to having a hands-off manager and gets somebody that delegates a lot and is very hands-on could be very overwhelming and frustrating as well. Cool. Ready to go? Okay. Hi, this is Nick from the Create team here with Ryan and with uh, our guest, Matt Carello. Matt works on the global IT side uh, on the infrastructure team. And uh, Matt's got a unique working situation and report situation, so he's kind of uh, agreed to share some insights with us. So Matt, if you can maybe just kind of set, uh, set us up with kind of where your manager sits and your workflow between uh, you know, how work is delegated from your remote manager to you. Uh, the current setup is uh, uh, my manager uh, works out of uh, Adidas headquarters in, in Germany. I've been in this uh, uh, situation for about two and a half years now. Uh, my manager and I, we meet on a weekly basis. Uh, we, re we review uh, uh, tasks uh, that are delegated to me, tasks that I've completed, tasks that I'm still working on, and also also uh, tasks that are uh, uh, delegated to me through the business, through demand from the business locally. Um, yeah, so it sounds like you have sort of two paths that you take workflow. So one from your your actual line manager, and then one more just from the needs of the market. Exactly through through the score system and through uh, the, the targeting the targets that we set in our roadmap uh, for our team. Okay, yeah. so you've got like a lot of information coming from multiple sources. So yes. what technology or tools do you use to help stay organized and on task and sort of regimented in, in your work? Generally, we we keep. Uh, uh, you, you, our, our files and our tasks listed in some Excel spreadsheets on some file shares on the W drive uh, over in, uh, that's hold, held out in, in Germany. But lately we've been uh, leveraging the SharePoint workspace. We have a team workspace where we log a lot of our, our tasks and work that's being done as part of the group. Uh, we can set it up where we have a blog where when information is added into the workspace, I'll receive a, an email alert indicating that a change was made uh, within that workspace so I can go out there and I'll look for it instead of uh, I mean, uh, the, the information will come to me versus me having to look for it. Uh, it it's been very useful and it's, it's something new for the group. Cool. So it sounds like there is a lot of technology involved when having a remote manager um, in order to stay up to date on projects, keep your manager up to date, let, let them know what they need you to work on. Um, what would you say is the most important factor in making remote management style delegation work? I, I feel that it's all about communication. Uh, I. In constant communication with my manager, we have meetings once a week. We have the core group that I am a member of is actually also uh, uh, sits in Germany as well. So we have bi-weekly meetings on top of that with, with the three core groups that I'm a member of as well. So it, it's all about communication, lines of communication being open and uh, uh, just being open and honest. It's, it's really about that. We, uh, we talk a lot and uh, 
you know, I, I have a good relationship with the team out there and uh, we, we get things. So I guess in summary, the biggest keys are using the technology to help support your business, keep communication open, and definitely being able to have that level of trust between reports and business. Teams. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. Right. Appreciate well, you're it. You're welcome. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. enjoyed hearing our interviews, the conclusion we came to is that delegation can be easily defined but interpreted differently by everybody. What we do know is that effective delegation can only impact the team positively, uh, both sides development. As with anything, delegation is constantly evolving.